We're going to analyze all the new moves introduced in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC. There are some really solid moves introduced and a few that look cool but may be duds. Some are going to be seen more in singles and there's some that will only be seen in doubles. I want to know which one of these moves you are most excited for and think are going to have the most impact. We'll start off with the new Diplin Evolution Hydrapple and its signature move Fickle Beam. This is an 80 base power special dragon type move. Slightly weaker than Dragon Pulse normally, but it has an amazing secondary effect. This move has a 30% chance to double to 160 power, making it an absolute nuke. When you look at Hydrapple's great base 120 special attack set, this mod doesn't even need investment to do big damage. This will be a fun move to play with. Another new move Hydrapple has access to is Dragon Cheer. This is TM226 and looks to be accessible on pretty much every mod who is a dragon type or has relations like egg groups and megas. This is strictly a doubles move and what it does is raises your ally's critical hit ratio by one stage. It isn't too impressive, but if the ally has a dragon type, they will have their crit ratio raised by two stages instead of one. This is a big boost as plus two crit ratio is a 50% chance to crit, so some pretty sweet combos could come out of this. I particularly like how some support mons like Melodic and Salazzle have access to this, and you don't have to stack dragon type weaknesses to use this move. You can also make some cool plays with Terra to change the ally to a dragon type and go for a guaranteed crit with a razor claw or a high critical hit ratio move. Next we have our Kaludons, or our Chaludons, however you want to say it. This mon signature move, Electro Shot. This is pretty much an electric type meteor beam combined with solar beam. It has 130 base power, 100% accuracy, and is electric type, meaning this mon won't gain stab unless Terran. But that might be for the better because this move has some crazy effects. First, it's a charging move, so the first turn will be spent charging while giving you a special attack boost akin to Meteor Bean. However, if this move is used in the rain, the charging turn is skipped and the attack happens all at once. This can lead to some crazy stat buffs in singles and is a pretty viable option in doubles considering this mod has Stalwart, meaning Lightning Rod, or any redirection moves won't draw this move away. This next one, I'm not sure how much use it will see, not because it's bad, but because this mon will likely be doing different things. This is Gouging Fire's signature move, Burning Bulwark. Forgive me if I mispronounce anything, I haven't really heard people say these yet. But it's a variant of Protect, and as far as I understand, it only protects against damaging moves, so status moves are unaffected. If any Pokemon uses a contact move into this mon while protected, they will become burned. So it's very similar to Baneful Bunker, which inflicts poison, but has the ability to block status moves. This move could be viable in doubles, as you probably wouldn't be as worried about status moves, and having that chance to block a contact move and inflict a burn is really nice. Common spread moves that Gouging Fire is weak to, like Earthquake and Rock Slide, don't make contact, but most physical dragon type attacks do, so maybe in a standoff against a mon you know uses contact moves, this could create a chance to successfully use this move and get a burn. Other uses for this move could be self procting guts, or leaving yourself open for ally status moves that might be blocked when using protect. In singles, I don't see this being run very often since this mod has great attacking moves, but we could see it on bulky sets with Morning Sun. Next we have Thunderclap, probably the coolest name for a move and the signature move of Raging Bolt. This was revealed for a while already, so a lot of you probably know it's an electric type sucker punch. It hits on the special side at 70 base power and will fail if the opponent doesn't use an attacking move. I think this move is pretty solid and with Raging Bolt having considerably less speed than Raikou, it is a cool tool to have. With a beefy 137 special attack stat, this mon can even just throw in a choice Bex or life orb and have this move destroy non-resist. It would likely have to run another electric move alongside this, but when you look at this mod's coverage options, not much stands out anyways. So we could see something like Calm Mind, Thunderclap, Thunderbolt, and whatever dragon move you like. Terror is always an option as well, but I think this move should see some solid usage. Iron Boulder is a futuristic Terrakion, and it seems like in the future they finally gave a rock type a powerful, 100% accurate, physical rock type move. The move Mighty Cleave is pretty awesome. 
Just look at that 95 power and 100% accuracy. It also has the amazing ability to bypass protection moves to still hit. It doesn't lift the effects like faint, but it's still a big deterrence for protect users and doubles. Since this mod has such great speed and attack, this is a really useful secondary effect. As far as I can see, this mod doesn't have rock slide, which would be the only other rock type move worth using since the flinch chance and hitting both targets is nice. It should be the go-to rock move in singles as well. Stone Edge is a tad bit stronger, but it's irrelevant when considering the accuracy difference. With Swords Dance, this move will likely be its go-to attack combined with close combat and Zen Headbutt. Onto Iron Crown, we have another move we had shown to us early in Tasha and Cutter. This is a special steel type move that hits twice at 50 base power for each hit. It bypasses accuracy checks and always hits besides when the opponent is using a move like fly or dig. What makes this move cool is that there have only been two special multi-hit moves and this one is the most powerful when talking base power. No contact means it won't be punished by rocky helmet or any other negatives and it can hit through things like sturdy, break a sub and inflict damage on the second hit and has two chances to crit. This is definitely an upgrade over Flash Cannon, which would be the other steel move it would use. It's nothing crazy, but it's just a solid move that should see use on this mod. Onto the big legendary of this DLC, we have Terra Pagos and its new move, Terra Starstorm. It's 120 base power in his normal type. It has some crazy effects when Terra Pagos changes to its stellar form though, as it becomes a stellar type and hits both foes. This makes it essentially a neutral typing, hitting every other type for neutral damage. It will also always hit for super effective damage if the target is terrestrialized, creating a super strong attack. This move is solid normally at 120 power, but it becomes pretty great if Terra Pagos has changed to a stellar form, since it's a guaranteed 120 base power attack to hit neutrally off a really strong 130 base special attack stat. Supercell Slam is the next move to cover, and I'm kind of happy about this move on one hand, but on the other, I'm kind of upset. I'm glad that we have a physical electric type move stronger than Wild Charge, with some distribution, but I'm kind of upset that it's a worse version of Jump Kick. Yeah, not High Jump Kick, Jump Kick. It has 100 base power and 95% accuracy, with the user taking half their total HP and recoil if they miss, or if this move is blocked. Unfortunately, most teams have ground types, and this move counts as a miss if targeted into them. It's also blocked by multiple abilities that would cause crash damage as well. This is why I say it's a worse version of Jump Kick, since they really just worry about ghosts, which aren't quite as common as ground types, and there can be abilities like Scrappy to bypass that. I still think it's usable on some mons, as the Electa Buzz line gets it, it would be nice on Zep Strika and Luxray when considering lower tier physical electric types. Rhyperior gets it too, which could actually be decent with its reckless ability to catch water and flying switch-ins. I wish it was just a bit stronger, even 110 base power, so there was more of a gap between it and Wild Charge. But I guess you can still call it an upgrade over Wild Charge. Alluring Voice is TM227 and it is an 80 base power special fairy type move with 100% accuracy. It's a sound based move which is good for bypassing substitute. This synergizes well with its secondary effect which confuses a target if they had a stat boost during the turn. Since mons that are using substitute often carry a status boosting move, this could be a useful option to snag a confusion while also hitting past a sub. It's a very situational secondary effect since confusion isn't the most useful status and it doesn't hard counter setup by any means. But this gives fairy coverage to some mons like Jolteon who struggle for good options and I guess mons like Lapras or Raichu could find some use as a coverage choice. The fairy types who get this move and have access to Moonblast should probably stick with that, but in singles it at least outclasses Dazzling Gleam which has no secondary effect and is the same power. In doubles Dazzling Gleam hits both targets so it will probably be preferred there, but if you want a single target fairy move I guess this is another option. Pepper Flare is a new fire type move that has the same properties of Stomping Tantrum. 75 base power in physical, which can double to 150 base power if the user's last move failed. To me, this seems like it's going to be a mediocre move like Stomping Tantrum is. It's the same power as Fire Punch without the burn chance, and the physical fire types who get this move would have access to a way stronger move like Flare Blitz. 
where I think this move might see some play, it has a decently strong coverage option on some non-fire types like Gyarados and Cloth, who don't have physical fire type coverage. Mons like Toucanon, Salamence, and Great Tusk would prefer this over Flame Charge and Fire Fang as a stronger and more accurate option. And a Mon like Rhyperior could capitalize on missing a Stone Edge or having a Ground Immune Mon blocking its Earthquake by using this move at 150 base power. It's situational, but I think you will see this move every now and then, likely more in singles lower tiers than doubles. TM228 Psychic Noise is next, and it is a very cool new move. It is a 75 base power special psychic type move that has the heal block effect for 2 turns. This means any mon hit by this move won't recover from leftovers, abilities like toxic heal or dry skin, cannot use rest, recover, leech seed, or any other recovery moves to recover. I'm not sure if it works exactly the same as heal block did, but if it does then it will also block the use of HP draining moves like draining kiss and giga drain which would be pretty huge. This is also a sound based move, but can help combat annoying sub leech seed strategies. I would say half the viability depends on blocking draining moves since being able to outspeed and use this move to shut down mons that depend on recovery is a great way to break through. You can essentially keep them in a loop with this move as once the effect wears off you can just use it again. I think this move could see some use on mons that don't mind a bit of a power drop off from psychic to prevent healing. Also, Toxtricity getting this move is pretty cool, as it would be boosted by Punk Rock. Hard Press is a physical steel type move that looks to be a Crush Grip clone. That should already tell you it might not be that great. It deals more damage the higher the target's HP is at, which means it will get weaker after opponent has taken damage. I'm guessing it's also between 1 and 120 power like Crush Grip and Ring Out. I'm not very impressed by this move, but I do find it funny how Regigigas has access to it. You can make the case for it being viable on Scissor since once it gets to 60 power and below, it will be technician boosted, but I don't see Scissor making room for this move. I'm not sure I see any mons using it in any format. Upper Hand is a physical fighting type move with 65 base power, and boy is this one the definition of a poorly executed move. So if the target of this move uses a priority move like Quick Attack, this move will go first and cause the target to flinch. Not too shabby. But if the target doesn't use a priority move, then this move straight up fails. So you have to correctly predict a priority move coming out, and you get a pretty weak move off and a flinch. Doesn't seem like an amazing trade off for such a gamble. I could see this move maybe being viable if it struck like a normal attack if no priority moves were used, but to just fail is outrageous. You should probably never see this move used except in some crazy cases where someone wants to be cheeky and try to make this move work. And the last move I'm going to cover is Malignant Chain. At the time of making this video, all the info I have is that this is a signature move of Petrurant, and it's a special poison type move. It has 100 base power and a chance of badly poisoning the target. This actually sounds really strong since inflicting toxic damage is huge in singles. I'm guessing the chance will be 30%, but it could be as high as 50% depending on how strong they want this mon to be. It will definitely be the go-to move on this mon for Poisoning Stab, and should synergize well with Hex, considering this is a part Ghost type. So those are the new moves. I think my favorite so far is Fickle Beam, due to the ability to just go Goblin Mode all over the opponent randomly. What's your favorite though? I want to hear in the comments. Thanks for watching buds, the best move of each type is in the editing phase, but I wanted to get this one up quickly in between, so expect that close to Christmas time as a gift to all my buds. See you guys in the next one.